Taking pictures from the tail gunner position of a bomber, that's a different kind of shooting. We're talking to Eric Johnston, aviation photographer in the hangar. I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus and that changed. Oh, well, that was great until the engine quit. And all of a sudden I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Welcome to this edition of In The Hangar. We're with aviation photography expert, Eric Johnson. Eric, thank you so much for being with us today. You're more than welcome, thank you for having me. You do, is it, you do photography and video? Tell me about what you do. I started out, um, I did photography many years ago and kind of got out of it for a while. And when I started to want to get back into it, I, I just kind of started getting more into videography as well. Uh, I like challenges and I didn't hardly know anything about videography and uh, still to this day still have a lot to learn but I'm all self-taught and I just picked up uh, my little camera power shot one day and I saw I had a video feature on there mm -hmm. so I started recording video and then what to do next how to edit that was the biggest question you know right. and, and I think that's still what holds up a lot of people but I we just recently got back into photography and I've uh, been having a whole lot of fun with that as well. So do you think you do more video or, or photography, still photography? For, the, for the, about the last 10 years, it's been mostly video. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, what I like about video is, you know, photos, with a photo you can freeze time. With a video you can tell a story. Right. You know, and you can tell a story with a photo as well, but it's just... I like the I like the, the dimensional aspect of videography, and it's uh, in in my opinion, it's uh, got a lot many different sets of challenges versus photography, di different challenges. All right, well let's talk about your photography for a minute. Um, so you have some really incredible shots that you've posted that I've seen. Uh, what are some of your favorites? The favorite ones are going to be a lot of the photos that I've taken with the group over at Mid-America Flight Museum over Mount Pleasant. Uh, the collection of aircraft that we have over there and the, the amount that we fly them is insurmountable to most other museums. Uh, we got some of the rarest airplanes in the world and it's not uncommon for you know, us to take them out and just go fly. You know, not for if, whether or not we're giving a veteran a ride or a kid a ride, or if we just want to go up and have some fun. You know, it's, it's not uncommon. We will use anything from the T-6 to the bird dog as a platform to the MD-500 helicopter. Uh, the, the best photo shoot that I've ever done was probably on the way to the Breckenridge Air Show. It was my first time to ever shoot out of the tail, gun, mm -hmm. the tail gunner position out of the B-25. And we have the B-25 God and Country. And the whole tail will detach off to where you're sitting in a totally unobstructed, you're not shooting through glass, you're not shooting through a hole this big. you got an area about this big that you're crouched in. And uh, you get harnessed in so you don't fall out and so forth. And uh, of course we brief it all so everybody knows what's going on. And the planes come up, as you'll see in some of the photos. The planes come up and you just, you know, sometimes you're looking at them, you're looking down at them, and you're looking to the sides. And it's, a, it's an unobstructed view. Let's talk about some of those photos. Okay. Uh, some, when we took off out of uh, Mount Pleasant, that's where the museum is based, we're going to Breckenridge. And we showed up in force. I say we, the museum. The museum showed up in force. We brought, I think, like seven or eight airplanes. And then we had a few other buddies tagging along, like Greg Shelton with his Wildcat was there. And so we, we took off first in the B-25, and then the, the brief was everybody was going to join up with us. And it happened pretty quick because we pulled the B-25. We knew we didn't have a whole lot of time to get there, so we were going to try to maximize our time and try to get the shots that we needed because we knew the fighters, they, fighters like to fly faster. So to pull them back, the airplanes don't really like it. They can do it, but not for a long period of time. So we thought, let's shoot the fighters, get them on the way. So it happened so fast, and it was, it was, it was information overload for me. And Warren Peach with uh, Texas Flying Legends Museum um, was a huge help. He got up real quick. He was in the course there. Hmm. He got up real quick. So from, yes, <laughs> very true. From my perspective, I'm looking at two TMM Avengers, a Corsair, a P-40, a Wildcat, and um, I'm a P-40 Mustang Corsair, and then the uh, two Wildcats over here. So... I'm looking at this spread going, wow, this is my first time. If you had given me a T6 or a Cessna 172 to shoot out the tail B-25, I'd have been happy. This right. was such a great opportunity to have. But here, I'm looking at this going, I better not mess this up. 
you know? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, you know, opportunity right here. So I'm looking at it going, okay, we, we got the, the Vic of uh, fighters, so you got the Mustang P40 Corsair and the well, two Wildcats. Well, and that, let's look at that picture. It's pretty amazing uh, that you, it's, a, it's, a, it's always a, a roll of the dice when you go up to get those kind of puffy clouds right there. You know, we didn't have them for long. We you lost couldn't have them. art directed that better. Right. That was mo Mason, the, it Yeah, was, because by the time you get to this picture, the clouds are gone. Yeah. Yeah. Then that was, that was Warren's suggestion to go because it, we, we actually had not the greatest lighting. It was all backlit. You right. know, the, the sun was kind of right up here sun, right. versus this way. And, you know, it was kind of offset a little bit, come to think of it. So we get like this, and I'm just, and I, I'm, I'm kind of awestruck because I'm trying to, you know, think, okay, <laughs> what, what do I need to That'd shoot? Like, I can't take a picture. I just want to enjoy the moment. <laughs> and normally the photographer, me, would be in the back talking on the intercoms to the right. pilots of the B-25, which were Scott Glover and Matt Bongers, saying, okay, I need this. My intercom was intermittent. Uh, okay. it, w it wasn't working. And these pilots are the some of the best in the business. Right. So I'm looking at this. I'm all struck. I'm trying to figure out what to do. I can't really talk to my, my, my pilots up front. And Warren goes, shouldn't we go to an echelon ride or something like that? You know, he knew, he knew where, the, where the stack needed to be in correlation with the light and to get all the planes in. And I'm reaching over here trying to, yes, you know, yes, trying to, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I'm not, so I, I just reach out and I go like this. And he goes, I'm getting up a thumbs up from the photographer on that one. And, okay. so, and everybody just moves over, stacks up. <laughs> and I, you know, and it was, it was great. Wow. I, I told her, I, I go, look over the canopy of everybody in front of you. It makes you can see my lens. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Now, th I like this shot because it's not the exact straight line. Okay. Right. So it, it, it's right before everybody really got in a, in a, in a perfect. Uh, now, why did you pick that versus the straight line? Why do you like the, the asymmetrical here? I'm, I, I like the, the behind the scenes stuff. Right. You know, and I like showing things of how why things work the way they do and you know and right. certain things and everybody will show everybody will publish the, the big the big the big guys the big photographers they will only show the straight line so yeah it'd be a little different yeah okay it just shows a different depth of depth to it and so what are some of the other uh, favorite pictures uh the duck shots that was the Jane. day before breckenridge and uh we we wanted to take it up for a uh, sunset flight so uh kelly mahon was there on hand kelly was uh, instrumental in getting this done mm -hmm. kelly is probably kelly is without a doubt the most current duck pilot in the world and he's a very experienced very high time float guy he's a crop duster by trade so he is a good stick right and he's a good man too which helps out but um Scott Glover's girlfriend, um, Brittany, wanted to go for a duck ride. So he goes, well, how about we accomplish Combine it with, it, Combine with the photo with sunset shot. So we took this, took up the uh, MD-500 helicopter, the old Magnum right. PI looking helicopter. Yeah. And uh, Jake Driggers, one of the uh, employees of the museum, just recently got his camera. So he was wanting to get some exposure. Well, what a great way to cut your teeth with an air-to-air -air shoot of a Grumman duck. Yeah, well, in addition, I mean, again, it's the roll of the dice. The clouds are perfect for that sunset. and you know, just really, really nice colors. So are, are you a pilot? I'm uh, working on it. You're working on yeah. it. Okay, so I've always wondered, you know, and seeing all your stuff that you posted, you know, do, I always see you that you're, you know, taking the pictures, but so where are you at in your training? Really close. Um, I need I need the written, okay. which is half of it. And then I got to do a long solo cross country, then a preparation for check ride, check ride. So you're so. really close. Yeah. yeah, all right, well, cool. Then uh, can't wait to hear you uh, get your ticket. So, uh, when you're shooting, tell me about the camera you use. I, I use a uh, um, Canon D DSLR. I got like a, a 5D Mark III? 60D. 60D. I'm, I'm still not okay. full frame. Okay. Uh, for years, I've had a really tight budget. So, even with right. my uh, camera mounting, my GoPro, stuff like that, I, got, right. I buy all my stuff used. I try right. to keep the budget down. I'm at the point now to where that I'm starting to make a little bit of money on it to where that I'm going to start upgrading probably over time. So, like, like, especially like all the ramp videos that I uh, ramp pictures that I see. Are, are you getting paid for that? Are you able to make some money doing this? No, it's, Not it's really. just your love of airplanes. Yeah, all the ramp shots, which are a lot out of McKinney. You right. know, they're, they're, they're very gracious. Uh, McKinney Air Center, where I work, I do line service over there. Right. They're, they're very gracious in, in our downtime and when it's appropriate with the crew or the pilot of the airplane. They're cool if I go out there and snap a couple pictures. Then I'll are go you, inside. You know, I've looked at your pictures, your ramp pictures, and um, I'm looking at it from a technical side and going, Mm, he must be on a tripod bulb exposure on this and doing some light. Are you doing some 
stuff like that, or are you just straight up taking pictures? Uh, both. For the night shots okay. that you see, which, right. every, which everyone seems to see, that's, that's on about a 30 second exposure. Yeah, that's what I thought. On a tripod. Right. Sometimes um, I might forget my tripod or something like that. And if you, did you see the pictures of the red yes. the helicopter? Yes. What I did, I, I, I've always got my camera with me. Right. But I didn't have a way to, I didn't have a tripod. So, but I knew I wanted the low angle shooting up. Right. So I took a stapler out of the office, laid it down, took the camera strap, doubled it up, put it on top of the stapler, and that gave me the angle that I just had to right. adjust the, you know, the, the um, um, distance from it to get the full frame. And then I did a 30 second exposure and I got an LED light about the same size as my cell phone. And I do about anywhere from two to five exposures to get exactly what I want. And then I just move to a different position. So. Right. What do you find the most rewarding about doing uh, aviation video and aviation photography? The biggest things are when we get to interact with the veterans. I mean, flying in these airplanes is phenomenal. Right. It, it, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, you know, when, when we did a formation flight with the Grumman Duck and the Fort Trimotor at the Mid American right. Flight Museum, those are two Pearl Harbor survivors. Wow. Out of four or five airplanes known to exist from Pearl, we got two of them and we fly them. Wow. So we put them up. At first, it was brought up like, should we do a, a, a duck and trimotor flight? And then a few people were like, why? You know, it's kind of odd airplanes, you know? And they go, well, they're both at Pearl Harbor. Okay, yeah. Oh, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do that, yeah. So it turned into a really cool thing. And so you get to the smells, the size, the sounds, stuff like that, the historical aspect. But really, the coolest thing is the veterans. When, when they come out, and especially if, you, if you've got time to sit down and hear their stories, you cannot put a value on that. Mm. That is by far the coolest thing. That and the kids. The kids. And it's not uncommon for us to be walking around the museum, and, and I'm not there nearly as much as the, the, the staff is, of course, but it, it's so common to be walking around, you see a guy wearing a World War II cap or a Korea or Vietnam hat or whatever, and Scott Glover, especially Scott's the biggest advocate mm -hmm. of veterans. He'll walk up, and, oh, hi, I'm Scott Glover, this and that. And if you didn't know he was the museum, the owner and founder of the museum, you'd just think he's some guy walking around the museum. Well, it, Tell, tell me about the Mid-American Museum. Where is it? It's, uh, over, it's over in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Okay. And uh, Scott, when I first met Scott, I was working at uh, Love Field, mm -hmm. and he call, came in in his T6. Mm -hmm. So I recognized it, and I went over there and started chatting with him, and it's just our relationship has started with that and it has grown. But the museum has grown substantially in the last two years. Uh, he has built a really large hangar out there. He's got over 50 airplanes. Wow. And if you go to several museums, uh, flying museums, you'll you'll see, you'll see a niche, you'll see an interest. Okay, this guy's a bomber guy. Right. This guy likes fighters. We got a 1925 Waco 9, we got a Ford Tri Motor, we got a Mustang. Um, we got several early antique classic airplanes. You know, we we like our Wacos. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we got a B25. We got two DC3s. You know, so well, one's a C41, but. Um, that museum, and I used to work at the Cavanaugh Flight Museum mm -hmm. way back, so I've got some exposure to, mu to museums. The Mid-America Flight Museum is, is a place for aviators. That's the best way to, you know, you got pilots and you have aviators. These guys can take up an airplane and just fly it. Hmm. And there's a big difference there. I've flown with a lot of guys. Some, some are great, some are good. These guys are the best. All right. Well. If you get a chance, uh, go out to the Mid-American Flight Museum, Mount Pleasant, Texas. Eric, thank you so much for being Very with welcome. us. Very uh, welcome. Thank you. You'll have to come back. I'd and, be happy uh, to. Maybe we can do a whole panel um, with uh, all the, the video guys. So thanks. Make sure you share and subscribe and always leave comments. We appreciate you watching. Take care.